Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's pre-market prep. I'm Spencer Israel, and I'm now on the line with Gary Kaltbaum. He uh, runs GaryK.com. He's an investment advisor. Gary, how are you doing this morning? I am great, and happy holidays to you and all your listeners, sir. Thank you. Thank you, and the same to you. I want to get to your latest report. Your, the headline, Janet Yellen, is way behind the curve. Can you elaborate a little bit on why you think that? Well, we are big believers in the markets here. Simple as that. We believe that the markets really are, are great forecasters of the things to come. Uh, we believe markets are a lot smarter than you, I, or the head of the Fed. And uh, when I look at what commodity prices and commodity stocks are doing, when I am looking at what the transports are doing while oil prices are crashing, uh, when I look at what retail stocks are doing, and I mean, for lack of a better word, they have just melted down, uh, it, it simply tells me that I, I don't think she knows what she's doing. You know, they have this whole thought process called data dependency. And in case your listeners do not know, that came out of the fact that in 06 and 07, they were wrong 100% of the time. That was Bernanke, Yellen, and, and the rest of the crew. When they kept coming out and saying everything was fine, housing was stable, subprime lending is just fine, the economy is safe, don't worry, everything's okay, and they realized that they got to stop predicting or else. So they went to this thing called data dependent to where we'll let you know what we think once the numbers come in. But the problem is when you are in monetary policy and doing all those things, you're not supposed to be waiting for things to show up. You're supposed to be in front of them. And I'm just uh, really convinced that the markets are saying something. Uh, and, and she got her most bullish on the economy in December when they decided to, with, with the big event, uh, to raise uh, rates a whopping quarter percent. And I'm just thinking she just doesn't know what the heck she's doing. And I suspect if uh, markets continue along the route that they are on, that um, uh, the economy's heading south, uh, not only here and around the globe, and the market knows it and is uh, flushing it out before anybody else. So then what are you seeing from the Fed, or what do you think we'll see from the Fed uh, for next year? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Uh, you know, they just raised, raised one, uh, they raised rates once. Uh, I doubt they'll raise again. And I will guarantee you that if we have a market hiccup, and I'm not talking about the, the sectors right now, we're talking the major indices catching up with the average stock, or we see a real slowdown in growth like the market thinks so right now, uh, they'll just back up that quarter point back to zero before you can say boo. And who knows, potentially uh, print money again. All right. Uh, you did say in your report that uh, financials, if they go, the market goes. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, we have a very, very narrow market. Uh, by my estimation, we're about 75% of all stocks and sector uh, uh, stocks are in a, a bearish phase of different proportions. 25% uh, are either holding up or doing decently, but there's really nothing that's skyrocketing. And one of the areas that are that is holding up best is those big financials. Um, but if you notice anything over the last few weeks, though. When they rally up, the market rallies up. When they get hit, the market gets hit. So the, the, to me, they are very important at this juncture. You, they're, they're very important mo at, mostly at all times, but more important right now. And if they start really getting and, and start getting these big financials like they've gotten some of these other areas, uh, there is absolutely zero hope for the market, and we will head uh, into new low ground, if not worse than that. So uh, I would suggest you watch the Citigroup, the Bank of America, the Wells Fargo, the J.P. Morgan, and the like. Uh, and and there's, still, there's plenty of them already in trouble. Uh, many of them are in bear markets, but as a whole, if you look at the XLF, or the IYF, they're just the low end of the trading range right now. So we're going to be watching those closely as we uh, go into the new year. What about the FANG stocks? Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google. We talk about them a lot on this show. You mentioned them also in your note. What are you uh, seeing out of FANG? Well, they're acting fine. Um, Netflix, a, a little bit of distribution here. But overall, Netflix, Google, 
uh, Facebook, Amazon, and a few others act fine. And, all, and the worst you can say about them is they're sitting tight over the last six or seven weeks after being in an uptrend. My biggest issue, and this is something to watch, and again, this is part of that financial thing, if those stocks go, the market goes also. And the worry right now is, and your listeners should take some time to look this up, uh, in 1972, 1973, uh, throughout that year, we had something called the Nifty 50. It was Polaroid, uh, IBM, and a few others that can do no wrong. And when the market would get hit, they would sit. When the market would go up, they would lead up. Uh, so they got this uh, moniker, the Nifty 50, while so many areas of the market were in bad shape until I believe it was the beginning of 73 uh, when they got hit. And that was uh, really when things started to get uh, in big trouble. I think we're Nifty 50-ish here. Um, it, the, it's a narrow group of names. And he, how institutions, the big money works, they have to be fully invested for the most part at all times. And when a lot of places are not working, when the market's deteriorating, they've got to get out of those areas that are deteriorating and put them into areas that are, A, either safe or B, that are working. And typically what happens at the end of bull cycles, there's a narrow group of names that are working, so they sell everything and they buy into those areas. It props them up and keeps them strong until they finally get them also. That's why I always say narrow markets are bad markets and bearish markets, so we have to watch closely. If they crack, good night. Uh, and I would suggest everybody watch the 10-week slash 50-day moving average for these names. Some of them are getting close close uh, but so far so good they're holding in like rocks okay so you are so you are uh very very bearish on the market what do you recommend that investors do then well let me say this i'm very bearish on 75 percent of the market <laughs> okay okay i i am very bearish on small caps mid caps i'm very bearish on the well, the commodities have been a gimme since uh, summer of last year. Right. I'm very bearish on retail transport. So for me, I'm paying a l less attention right now to the major indices uh, than uh, all the uh, sub areas. I think that's more important because this year, if you own ten or f ten to fifty names that have held up great, you're doing fine. And fortunately, that's what we have done. But if you this year owned Macy's and and um, Kohl's and Gap stores and Bed Bath and Beyond, you, you're dead. So for me, I am very bearish on a and let's Brazil, Russia, China, the, these other areas. So I'm bearish selectively. I'm a lot more bearish selectively than I'm bullish selectively on the upside. And I'm being very cautious to watch uh, those names that have held up best because if they are gotten, goodbye. And just so you know. I scan every night about 2,000 stocks. It takes me about 45 minutes, and I don't even have to press any buttons. It, it automatically shoots. I, I, I am down to literally 75 to 100 names in, uh, out of the 2,000 that are acting, uh, and they're not even real bullish. They're just holding up well, uh, and, and that's usually not good news. Uh, you know, I was asked a question yesterday on an email I mentioned on radio. Gary, is there a chance that the worst area of the market stopped going down and turned back up and, and we get going again? And I said, yeah, in, in the world of markets, anything's possible. But also in the world of markets, let's get a little bit of evidence that that's going to happen. And so far, it hasn't in any way, shape, or form. And when I list how many sectors are in bad shape versus how many sectors are in good shape, uh, it, it is amazing the contrast. In good shape right now, this is it. Uh, soft drinks and alcoholic beverages, um, the Home Depot Lowe's, uh, a couple of the defense names because everybody likes a good war, uh, the, the, the cruise lines, a couple of those names, but it's a very small group. Uh, the food store like Kroger's acting well, uh, some household products and defensive names. And after that, that's really about it as far as bull markets right now in this market. And that's why going into 16, I'm worried because if they start to get the areas that have been working and then they hit the indices, uh, it's going to be one hell of a uh, 2016. You read my mind. I was about to ask you for uh, any recommendations, anything you do like, but I do want to also ask this is a question from the chat. Do you have an opinion on 
any advertising agency stocks? Um, uh, you know, again, as far as what I like, it's just about things that are holding up right now. Uh, and if they can break, if Google and Amazon and Facebook that have been sitting tight for six weeks can break out to the upside, that's great news. And you can probably put some more points on the scoreboard. I'm, I'm sure you can. And who knows? Maybe they'll go climactic and pull a, a 1999. I'm just letting you know that underneath the surface, uh, it, it, it's quite suspect. As far as advertising stocks, I know I follow Omnicom, uh, acting okay, you know, really off the lows, and right now holding support. If Omnicom can hold uh, the $74 level and start pushing through 76, uh, there's probably a trade in it to the upside. But again, really not great leadership that I'm typically looking for. Uh, I'll, I'll call it an okay. Uh, stock right now. Uh, I think there's another one I follow. How about a consulting company uh, that I think consults in advertising, maybe Booz Allen, B-A-H. That's pretty darn strong. I like the action in that, but otherwise, uh, not much meat on that one. Uh, another question from the chat. What about REITs? Are there any uh, real estate investment trusts that you that you uh, There's a few of them acting well, uh, and I should have mentioned, but but not all. When I when I say the group, uh, the, the REITs aren't acting so well as a group. There are a few names. If you look at um, Digital Realty, symbol D R D L R. That's at new highs right now. Believe me, there's no stocks at new highs. So that's pretty darn strong, but is extended to the upside near term. You probably want to look for it on a pullback. The uh, storage stocks are acting well. The storage REITs, Sovereign Self, uh, SSS, broke out at 102 and is already 107. Very strong stock. Uh, public storage, PSA, that's another one at new yearly highs. Uh, that one looks good. Uh, EXR uh, is another one, I'm pretty sure. Extra Space Storage, that one's called. So the storage names. So there's definitely a few REITs out there. Uh, again, if that's the type of thing you like buying. So I, I have no complaints about that. And notice they're a little bit defensive. Uh, so a, a few of them are working, but not a ton of them. All right, Gary, thank you so much for that. Uh, that, that was a, just a barrage there of, of analysis. So uh, we're going to let you go. It is 930. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. We will talk to you again soon. And as, as always, uh, good analysis. Thank you very much. Have a great day.